Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Shini here and this is my channel Selenium Automation and Java Learning with Shini. So if you are new to this channel, I will strongly recommend go ahead and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications because here I'll be sharing a lot of free videos on Selenium, Python, Java, API, automation, robotics versus automation and even I'll have a lot of playlists created on different interview questions on Java and Selenium. So soon I'll be starting an extensive series and continue on my Python automation, Python uh, playlist as well as the API automation. So stay tuned and do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done yet. So in the last lecture, we had seen the first part of collections usage in Selenium. So in this particular part, we are going to see one more collection method which was left out for us to cover in the last session. So we'll continue it in this session. So let's get on to the practical part. So this was the program which we had written last time. So we are using Java with Selenium. So if you are new to uh, this particular channel, so I had already covered this particular tutorial session first part in my previous, so you can just go over and watch it. And if you are not much aware of Java, you can go over my Java tutorials playlist as well as Selenium basics tutorials as well. So let's get started. So here we are in the main method. So I'm going to take the same example what we had seen last time, the moneyredive.com. So it's already open here. And I've taken this particular UPL company as the reference. If you just look at this, so I'm trying to find out what are the preceding siblings for this particular UPL element that is UPL stock. So there are two stocks and the two rows are getting highlighted as we can see, right? So what we have to do is we have to, first of all, find out what are the different elements so here these are different elements which belong to these two rows so we have to first find out what are those store them into a list right we will iterate them over the list we have already seen how we are doing that in the previous lecture in this particular method element list usage so if you look at this we are just trying to find out the elements so it's more than one element if you see here it's one of two so we are storing it into a list of web elements and we are iterating it over the iterator of web element right so as we do itr dot next whatever next element we get we are storing it into this element variable and we are getting its get text so that get text is going to give us this entire value right ifl holdings a 146140 etc etc now what do i have to do here what my requirement says is that I have to store each of those rows, right? Depicting that, okay, this is the element one. It should store the entire values, whatever you have got of IIFF holdings or A146140, etc., etc., right? I need to get all of those values stored into one particular element. So what I'm going to do here is I'm creating a hash map here. So this is the another collection type which I was talking about. So this is what we're going to see in detail in this session. So we have a very good and a very favorite collection type that is hash map. This is one of the favorite interview questions of an interviewer. So you have to use hash map whenever you desire to store a key value combination. So if you notice here in this rectangle, in this particular less than greater than braces, I have mentioned two values here. Both are of type string. This is not a binding here. You can mention any of the type. It could be integer. It could be string here. So you can do like this. It could be integer. It could be string here, right? Or it could be some other type, whatever you would want to, right? So here, this is going to store all the wrapper classes. So if you see wrapper classes means I will start with capital, right? Integer string or integer double. This are called wrapper classes, right? It cannot store primitive types. That is the thing with collections, but arrays, they can store primitive types. So you need to know the difference between what does an array do? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? When do we need to use arrays? When do we need to use hash map? So hash map you'd be using, as I said, whenever you want to store a key value combination or retrieve such a value corresponding to a key in those situations, hash map is going to be very useful. Also hash map is non-synchronized that what do we mean by non-synchronized it means it's very fast and effective because it doesn't require to wait for a resource there is no locking mechanism here since it's non-synchronized it can basically have the multi-threading happening in parallel 
so it will be having a much faster performance so we'll go back to our original key and value data types so it's string and string so this is how you create a hash map variable okay now we have to allocate memory to our hash map so we are using the new operator here we are using again the same syntax as we see on the left hand side and we are going to put this left side and right side parenthesis to complete the memory allocation part right now once this is done we have to basically use this element values to a effect as to store some data into it and then later on retrieve the data right to our advantage like how we would want it to be retrieved we would want it to happen that way so as i mentioned it's going to be key value pair so let's see how do we use that so we are trying to iterate over this list now sbi preceding sibling of course his name is going to change because i've changed it to uh, other value so it's no more chumble for list because it has got changed the because it's a dynamic website so it will keep on changing so let me replace this xpath here okay and we will call this as upl So we'll just replace this UPL here. Yeah, and there it is gone. So what we are going to do, we are iterating over this list now, right? And once that is done, we are getting one by one all the elements and storing into web element. We are getting the get text as well. Now, whatever get text we get here is going to be the entire row data, this entire row data. So that we are going to store corresponding to saying as this is the element one, this is the element two. And that element one is pointing to this entire row of data. Similarly, element two is pointing to this entire row of data. So how the logic is written here is that I've taken a variable i equal to one just to start with, and I'm just getting the value here, whatever we have got through get text, it's going to return the entire row data. And this is the method we are going to use for our hash map. So let me just show you in brief, what are the different methods which are available for a hash map. Just use a dot operator you would be seeing a list of methods appearing. Yeah, you can see here, we have different methods appearing in the list now. So we have get, we have contain, skip. There are so many methods which are available. For now, we will just focus on what we want to do. We want to insert the value into our hash map collection. So we are going to have a key value pair combination. If you look at this method, string key, comma string value, it's a method of hash map class. So I have used that method here. And the key what I'm mentioning here is of type string, of course, but I'm just preceding it with the word element and appending it using the plus operator and I variable. Because I just want to indicate this is the element one, this is the element two, that way. And comma, the value, whatever you've got, the element dot get text as a second parameter. So this is the way we have to mention it in this method, element one, is correspondingly having this particular value, which is the get text. Then I'm just incrementing the i variable. So when the next uh, row comes, when the next data comes, it will become element two and it will have the value of element two. So this is how I'm just going to store the data. Store data into hash map, right? So this is clear. And after that, I'm just calling a method to display the hash map values because I want to do all the operation within this method itself. I need not again call from the main method a separate method to just print the hash map values. So I'm just calling right away from this method itself. I'm just passing the hash map. So whatever hash map we pass it to this method, it is just going to print the value. So let's look at how can we retrieve the value from a hash map. It's quite simple, but you just have to know the syntax and how to use it. So we have already got this hash map string string element values from that particular method. So what we have to do is again, we have to use a dot operator. Now there is another method within hash map that is called entry set. So just to give you an idea, what is an entry set? Entry set will have a collection of all the entries in a set. It's like a unique combination of the values in a set. As we discussed earlier, set is going to store only unique values. So this is going to be a unique combination of entries. When you say entries here, it's more than one entry. 
and each entry is going to be a combination of string and string that is key and value that is why we are going to say this as an entry set right so if you do a mouse over on this entry set it is going to return you a set of entries and each entry is going to be of type key and value string comma string so that is how we have arrived at this particular data type and this is the variable name element set now you're going to use this variable name and you have to iterate it over so that you can retrieve the value one by one. So I'm going to say again the same variable here dot. Now as we had seen in our other collection interface methods, we are having this iterator method as a part of the collection interface. Since HashMap is also implementing the collection interface, it is also having this iterator method. Right. So I'm going to use this iterator method here. and once we do a mouse over, it is going to again show you what is going to be the type. It is iterator of entries, iterator of entry string and string, the same data type. So we've used the data type of iterator here and created a variable ITR. Now till the ITR has got next record, it is just going to get one at a time each and every entry. If you say ITR.next, if you do a mouse over again, it's going to give you an entry of string comma string, right? So that you're going to store it into this variable, right? Now, how do we retrieve the key and value? That is the most important part, right? We need to get key and value saying element one is having this value. So we are going to get that by this particular way. We have already got the entry here. So we are having a method entry dot get key. So it is going to get the key of your entry. That is this particular portion and we have just separated it with some space and value is the entry dot get value. So this is how you use the methods of your hash map collection to get the key and get the value. Right. So I hope you have got this concept clear. So let's run this program and let's see what is the output. So I'm just looking at what is the X path and all right. So here what we can do is uh, we have already passed the X path and that X path is the updated one. I've already updated in my main method. If you look at this X path list I'm passing that X path list to this element list usage method. So what we can do is we can just directly use this X path value rather than saying hard coding it into our method. We can simply put it here the X path value. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, this is fine now. Right. So let's run this program now. Okay, so there seems to be some error. Let me look at what is the error. So it's saying a null pointer exception at main method and element is usage 35. Hey, sorry guys actually we had commented out this particular line that was the issue uh, because we were just trying to look at the other two examples in a previous session that is why we had commented out the setup application so that it doesn't launch it again and again the first part so because of this there was the issue so if I just correct it out it is going to be able to launch the application first and then use the same driver session to continue with our operation so let's run the program that is why we are getting this null pointer exception. It should launch the browser. Yeah. And maximize it. Yeah. So now if you can look at this part here. So I'm doing this printing part as well to just get the text part of it. And if you look at the key and value combination, key element one whenever it has gone first time this was the sequence it went into it so that time itself it had inserted this value into a hash map 
and it's called as the element one that is the key and the value corresponding to it is the entire data of this element one whatever we got it from the get text similarly for element two we have got the entire row data so this is how we are going to use hash map to our usage in selenium web